I've been using Logic for more than eight years. I've written and produced over 200 songs and taught over 500 students who are now releasing their own music. To start, I'm gonna show you how to stop the biggest trap beginners fall into when they start learning Logic. Let's start the clock. When Steve Jobs started Apple, he didn't manufacture the parts and write all the software himself, right? Instead, what did he do? He knew where his time would be most valuable, which is focusing on the vision and the big picture of where Apple would go. Then he built a team to handle all the stuff around him. So where would Apple be if Steve had tried to write code, manufacture the products and market everything by himself? Well, we'd probably all be using Androids. So when it comes to learning Logic, you want to think like Steve Jobs. Even if you want to do everything yourself in Logic, there's value in setting a focus on what you are the best at. So what are some of the areas that you can focus on in Logic? Well, a lot of beginners start using Logic because they want to write, create, and release their music. And that's great. That's why I started too, right? But there are three fundamental focus areas in Logic that you should know about first. So let's start with focus area number one. Let's say we have a friend named Bill. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Bill is retired and wants to use Logic to record all his song ideas that he's just collected over the years from his career. He doesn't really care to make his music sound professional. He doesn't really care to have it published or he doesn't actually even care to make any money from it. He just really wants the joy of documenting his songs. Bill's focus area for Logic would be songwriting. So what would Bill or you need to learn in Logic to focus on the area of songwriting only? Well, for songwriting and logic, you would need to learn these four specific things. How to record one track or two tracks at a time, how to balance them together with volume, how to add some preset effects to make them shine, and how to export the song. This stuff can get you a result like this. Filling up my lungs with promises I'm breaking. Now let's take the same song that Bill created, but talk about a different scenario to explain focus area number two. Now let's say we have a friend named Ashley. Ashley writes a lot of songs, but wants to make them sound big and professional, like something you might hear on the radio. She's very musical, but she's not really a technical person. Ashley's focus area would be production. So what do you need to learn to get good at production? You should get good at sound selection and songwriting and arrangement. As a producer, ask yourself, okay, with Bill's song, what could be added to this song to make it better? And maybe it's nothing, right? But it could also be adding different instruments like drums, bass, piano, synths, guitars, vocals. It's your job as the producer to either go and record these or find someone else to do it for you. Not only this, but you need to focus as a producer on the dynamics and arrangement of the song too, which is really important. Most of you here are gonna fall, I think, in this production focus area. I do as well. And later in the video, I'm gonna explain how you can get better at this focus area. But first, let's just look at what a produced version of the song could sound like. Can you tell me how these illusions that I see don't mean a thing when you're around? Yes, I should know. So now let's level up this even more and talk about a different scenario to explain the third focus area. Now let's say we have a friend named Steve and Steve is a very technical person. He's not a songwriter, he doesn't care to write songs, but would just rather get into the technical details of music. Steve's focus area would be mixing. Mixing is a different skill set and it requires a lot of trained practice of just listening and understanding the technical side of music. For instance, EQ, sound dimension, space, width, and just overall sonic dimension and balance. If we were to take a song example from the mixer's perspective, we'd be looking to balance everything together and, and polish the sound. We're not writing songs and we're not producing songs at this point. We're really in the technical details of the music. So we have songwriting, production, and mixing. Now, is there a fourth scenario that we might be missing here? What if you actually want to do all three of them or you're not sure what to focus on? So before deciding, ask yourself, what topic areas are you the best at? For example, I personally prefer to write and produce my own songs, but have someone else mix them. At the beginning, I tried to do all three, and that was cool because you learn a lot, but it's overwhelming. And honestly, it just takes up a lot of time. That's why when you're learning logic, don't put that stress on yourself, but decide rather what focus area you're gonna tackle. Which brings us to our next problem, which is once you set a focus area, how are you supposed to get better? I'm gonna show you what I did to create over 200 songs and dramatically improve my skill set. It has to do with using the EHT method. The EHT method is something that I like to call 
easy, hard tasks. When I first started learning logic, I would show up every day not really sure what I was supposed to do or what I was even supposed to learn. This was frustrating, partly because I didn't have a focus area, but also because I didn't have any EHT tasks to do. I was either doing too many easy things I already knew, or I was just too overwhelmed with all the hard stuff. I needed a mix of both. So what did I come up with? I started recreating popular songs. This was easy because I didn't have to create anything from scratch or develop any new ideas, but it was still hard because I had to figure out how to recreate each sound. It was the perfect EHT. Because it was easy, I could show up every day and work on a new song, but because it was also hard, I learned something new every day and this kept things exciting. So how do you find your own EHT? If I were you, I'd steal what I did and just recreate songs. Or if you're not into that, really focus on finding that balance between easy and hard. If you're gonna spend the time learning logic, don't just do easy things you already know. Push yourself a bit, but not too much or you're just gonna give up. So how do you recreate a song? Let's talk specifics here and go step by step into how I did it. Step one, download the song and drag it in to Logic Pro. Step two, add a channel EQ to the stereo web channel. Step three, structure out the song with markers. Simple, but seriously powerful. Step four, the hardest part, start building out the instruments in your song. Do the following first, drums, bass, key synths, and then vocals. That's what I would do. If you're having a difficult time, because you will, figuring out the sounds, this is where the channel EQ comes in handy. You can do a high cut or low cut to identify the frequencies in a specific range. If this is your first time doing this, just try your absolute best to make it sound similar. It won't be that good at the beginning, but it will get better over time. I mean it, it will. I was in the same position. You can also even go a step further here and used to use the stem splitter tool in Logic, which will really help you dial down and identify the, the sounds in your reference track. Now this brings me to my next piece of advice, which is gonna put this all together and supercharge your growth in Logic. If you've ever been to a horse race or maybe you've just recently been on a carriage, you might have noticed one very important piece of equipment that the horse is wearing. This piece of equipment allows the horse to stay composed and ignore all the distractions around him. A common problem a lot of us beginners are facing is we don't have our blinders on like the horses do. We are all falling prey to the hours of advice there is on YouTube and whatever you get on the internet. And I get that this is a bit hypocritical of me, to also be repeating this. However, I will say one thing that has helped me out a lot. I put my blinders on and had tunnel vision toward my focus area, but also my easy hard tasks. Distraction is the enemy. But how are you supposed to get better if you have blinders on and you can't speak to anyone for advice? Well, I'm gonna show you what I did. I stuck to two people to seek advice from, and then the rest I just took everything with a grain of salt. A lot of advice online might not be relevant to you. It still might be good, but just not relevant. For example, my online course helps singer-songwriters learn how to produce music. If you're making metal music or hip hop, then we're not gonna be a great fit. It's not relevant to you. Besides this, I also spent a lot of time working with people directly to get that quick feedback loop in person. So. How do you know who to trust and or where to go learn? In terms of value, I think if you're gonna to commit to an online course, just make sure that you have access to the teacher, that you can actually speak with them in person or online. In terms of trust, I would make this a personal decision and just ask yourself a few questions. One, do you like the person you're learning from? Two, are you getting better from their advice? And three, is their skill set or the music they're making something you aspire to? The thing is though, even though I've been using Logic for years, I'm still learning new things. Your learning is actually never gonna stop, by the way. But if you feel like you're still stuck at that beginner stage and not sure how to get out of it, watch this video here, and I'm gonna teach you the 9.2 obvious signs that could be holding you back. These are some easy fixes that will immediately make you more confident making music in Logic Pro.